David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? How many of you are glad to be in anybody's house? How many of you are glad to be alive on this beautiful day that the Lord has blessed us? But we are indeed blessed and grateful to be in the house and presence of the Lord. We are so grateful today for our music ministry who's going to take us higher. Those of you who are just joining us now, I would ask that you would turn your Bibles to John chapter 8, verse 36, as worship continues. One writer asked, is there a word from the Lord? And I'll tell you, there is a word from the Lord. Join us now in worship. And those of you who are joining us now, we will commune together at the end of the sermon. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise? How many of you are glad that you're free this morning? Do you know that you're free? Yeah. How many is willing to run with patience? Because you know what awaits you. I got anybody in here? All right. We come to praise the Lord this morning. I'm running for my life, running cause I want to see Christ. I made up in my mind, I'm going to run on while I still have time, I'm going to run. church bell tones I stop and I wonder Lord how long you see the hearse wheels they're rolling too then I tell myself that could have been you so I gotta run oh somebody know what I'm talking about this morning every day I'm gonna run When these eyes of mine are closed And the blood in my veins is cold When I step out of life's back door I won't be able, y'all Then I can't run no more So I gotta run Oh, I wish I had some help this morning Wow. 
Hallelujah. You gotta run. Thank you. I invite you to turn now to John's Gospel, John chapter 8, verse 36. 36 only. If you don't have your swords with you, then it should be posted on the screen. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And I want some folk who've come to have church. We want to talk about this morning, free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. God, we yield ourselves. I yield myself totally to you. I am your vessel, and my heart's desire is to be used by you. God, I pray that you will anoint me afresh. Speak the words that you will have spoken. The words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thine sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, have your way in this place. Send help from on high. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. If the Son, Jesus, therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Former NFL player Miles McPherson describes his bondage to cocaine and deliverance by Christ. He states, in preaching today, I was a defensive back playing for the San Diego Chargers and living the life I've always wanted to live. As a rookie arriving at the training camp, I'll never forget the day I walked into the hotel room occupied by six partying veterans. The pressure to get along, to fit in, he said, was overwhelming. So when the guys pulled out cocaine and passed it around, I knew I had a decision to make. Take part or be left out. Take part or be left out. The cocaine, and the introduction is a little long, but stay with me, that I consumed that night took me by the lapels and forced me into submission. Soon enough, he said, I was completely under its control. There I was, he said, at the top of the sports world, playing on TV every Sunday and enjoying a nice contract. And yet, every chance I got, I drove myself into the sleazy neighborhoods of the city and paid good money to a dealer who sold me cocaine. At the time, there were several guys on the team who were Christians, and they were vocal about their relationship with Jesus. One guy in particular, he said, was downright aggressive. One day on a chartered flight from a game, he got my attention. He stared me in the face. He asked, if you die today, are you going to heaven? You know Jesus wants to live in your heart. What are you going to do? Miles McPherson said it freaked him out. Later one night, he said one of my teammates drove me down to a crack house. I encountered a shriveled up skeleton of a soul, a man with a dirty white wife beater on who was busy making a batch. He had given his life over to the drugs and it was killing him. I looked him up and down. I felt sorry for him until I caught myself in the mirror. And God said to me, what's the difference between you and him? Just then, McPherson said, my teammates entered the room and the cook handed him a crack meat. He stood right in front of me, put that filthy pipe in his mouth and took a hit. 
I watched his eyes roll back in his head and his body go limp. I thought he was going to die. He asked me, you want to try? You want to hit? I gulped and said, yes, but no, I'm not strong enough. I'm afraid. He said, I began begging myself not to do it anymore. I was throwing away my dream, the best opportunity I could have ever hoped for. But no matter how fiercely I pleaded with the man in the mirror, I just couldn't stop. I couldn't handle this on my own. Just one more day of voice from the deep, the dark side said, just one more hit, just one more try, just one more party. Finally, the moment of truth arrived. I began a cocaine binge in the evening, and when 5 a.m. rolled around, I still hadn't gone to sleep. He said I was shackled by my habit and utterly helpless against it. He said, but something came to me and said, there has to be someone who's stronger than your addiction. He said, at that moment, I recalled what my Christian teammates said about the power of Jesus. And so I called out to Jesus. He said, I yelled, Jesus, save me. Who else was going to do it? At that moment, he said, Jesus, save me. When I got up off my knees, that sounds familiar. When I got up off my knees, that sounds familiar. When I got up off my knees, I'm talking about somebody that's been bound. When I got up off of my knees, everything was different. I knew I had been delivered. I knew I had been set free. And now I'm saved. The desire to use was gone. I had been delivered. By God's grace, from that point forward, I would never do drugs again. I had been set free. Can I tell you this morning, there's nothing too hard for God to do. Now, if I had said that to a room of individuals who were novices, new to the faith, I could see their response. But there ought to be somebody in here this morning that can testify <laughs> that there's nothing too hard for God. There ought to be somebody that can tell somebody there's absolutely nothing too hard for God. There's not a problem he can't solve. There's not a soul he can't save. There's not a sickness he can't heal. A few weeks ago, Mrs. Henry and I joined in on June 19th with so many other people as we made the trip to Raleigh to celebrate Juneteenth, the what, emancipation of enslaved African Americans. Juneteenth marks the anniversary of the long-awaited announcement by General Order Number 3, the Union Army General Gordon Granger, on June 19, 1865, in Texas. He declared the slaves in Texas free. You know, we drove to Raleigh. Gas is expensive. Wouldn't it be a sad commentary to have participated in a Juneteenth celebration? and not have been declared free ourselves? Them call, well, they didn't get that. Tomorrow, July 4th, marks the what, commemoration of the directly Declaration of Independence, which was ratified by Congress in July 4th, 1776. The day is known as America's independence. It marks our nation breaking free from Great Britain and now it has been declared a national holiday. But wouldn't it be embarrassing for you to buy your hot dogs, your hamburgers, your ribs, make your potato salad, green beans, or whatever you have, and you are really not free? Pastor Henry, you mean to tell me that Juneteenth did not permit us freedom? You mean to tell me that our nation, having celebrated its freedom, does not declare us free? No, 
Deacon Carlton is helping me here. Maybe the rest of you will catch on in a minute. What does it mean to be free indeed? And we're going to have church in a minute. What does it mean to be free indeed? And maybe I need to pause right here and ask, have you declared your independence? Can you tell somebody that I am free? But not just free, but are you free indeed? Romans 6, Perry 23 through 27, the Bible says, For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness. Romans 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I wish I had at least 10 folk that know that you know that you are free. You were not set free by the occasion of Juneteenth. You were not set free because of the holiday on tomorrow. But somebody in here knows that there is somebody who's able to deliver us. There's somebody who's able to set us free. Deacon Nicholson, what I loved about the text is it speaks to the past tense. You were servants of sin. Present tense, but now. Can I part right there? You were. And for those of you who said, well, your introduction was about a man who was addicted to crack cocaine. And you know we got a lot of folk who feel like there are categories of sin. Uh-huh. Uh, Christian folk believe that there are certain things that you can do. But my Bible says, for we all have sin. Come on, somebody. For we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. I need to tell somebody, you're no better than an addict this morning. You're no better than an alcoholic this morning. You're no better than that person that's incarcerated. Because the truth is, those individuals are locked up and still could be free. I see some of y'all getting your hands up like you can't get it up. I said it, I'll say it again. There are individuals who are incarcerated, who are free. And there are individuals who are in church, who are bound. I said there are individuals who are incarcerated that are free. And there are individuals in church who are bound. Pastor Henry, I dare you to say that about us this morning. I wish I had somebody up. The Bible says those whom Christ have set free are free indeed. Are you trying to tell me I'm in church and in bondage? The problem with bondage is so many people are in denial. There are people who are bound in their marriages. Oh, deacons, y'all may have to help me. There are people who are bound in relationships who are not married. Are y'all with it? There are people who are bound in their workplaces. Help me some. There are people in family, dysfunctional families that are bound. Talk to me, somebody. And it's not until you've been set free by the power of the blood of the Lamb that you can declare your true freedom. Can I tell you this morning that Christ is the only true freedom? A relationship with Jesus Christ, y'all don't hear me, is the only means by you can really say I'm free. I said, what do you mean? That, that, that seems to be a bit old-fashioned in today's society to say I'm saved, I'm delivered, and I've been set free. It may be old-fashioned to you, but it still works. Anybody know it still works? Anybody glad this morning that you can say I'm free? It does not mean that we haven't had a past. It does not mean that we haven't done things that we are ashamed of. But what it means is right now, God knows I wish I had somebody help me. Right now, you can tell somebody, I'm not the person I used to be. I don't do the things I used to do. I have been set free. A text this morning is from John 8. This is one of those times that you cannot read the immediate text without going back and reading the pretext. 
the pretext flows from the latter part of John 7. And then it walks us into a statement made by Jesus, and then we will find our interest in today's text. Pastor John 7, the latter part of John 7, tells the woman a story of a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Don't miss the connection. Stay with me. They brought her to Jesus. Now, when you go back and read that, what you'll discover is it was really a test. Well, you mean a test, preacher? They were testing Jesus. And here's the outcome. The bottom line is they thought they had Jesus trapped. And according to the law of Moses, if he released her, are y'all with me? Then he could have been charged with breaking the law of Moses. If he would have had her stoned, according to the Roman law, are y'all with me? He would have been breaking the law as well. So they found themselves standing before Jesus with a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. And God knows where the man was. Y'all didn't hear me. In fact, if you want to know the truth, if you really exegete the text and find out what it was that Jesus wrote on the ground, and no one really knows, Deacon Perkins, there's a strong possibility. There's a strong possibility. I say there's a strong possibility that the man who she was entangled with could have been one in the crowd. Now, some of y'all say, oh, I don't know whether I can believe that or not, but the Bible said that Jesus didn't answer them a word, but he stooped down and wrote on the ground. <laughs> I wish I had somebody to help me. Uh, theologians say he's wrote in Aramaic, so we do not know exactly what he wrote. Are y'all with me? But whatever he wrote arrested their attention. Then he stood up, talked to me somebody, and said to them, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. The next verse says, and those that accused him left from the eldest until the youngest, which means that somebody in the crowd, from the eldest to the youngest, could not toss the stone. Jesus, Reverend Caldwell, looked at the woman and said, woman, where are your accusers? I know that wish I had somebody else. She says, I don't have any. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Freedom set free by Christ. Pastor Henry, I'm in church, and today is July 3rd, 2022, and I'm not sure. If I'm free indeed, then I'm going to tell you how to become free indeed on this day. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to release your fireworks. If you believe in God's son, then he will place fireworks on the inside of you. You don't have to wait until tomorrow to celebrate. You can celebrate on the day before. You can tell somebody, today I'm free because those whom Christ have set free are free indeed. Preacher, you going to preach? I am in a minute. So at the end of that discourse, Jesus makes a profound statement in verse 32. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what is the truth? The truth is Jesus. The truth is his word. The truth is finding and establishing a relationship with him. Preacher, back that up. In the farewell discourse, you hear Jesus saying, stay with me. He says, I am the way, I am, and the life. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Are y'all with me? He references himself. It is in Christ that we find freedom. Not on the 4th of July, not on June 19th. It is in Christ that we find freedom. Freedom is abiding in and knowing that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, I thought somebody would have celebrated that. Freedom is abiding in and knowing that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It does not hold me captive to my past because we all have one. What, it, what our Lord is looking at is what are you doing right now? 
bondage. Miles McPherson was in bondage. Deaconess Jenkins, there are many other people who are in bondage and not able to express or articulate their freedom today. And there are some folk who are afraid. They tiptoe around their freedom because they know that the enemy stands nearby, ready to accuse us, ready to condemn us. Are y'all with me? But the Bible says, those whom Christ, the Son, have set free are free indeed. Dennis Jernigan said, if we who have been redeemed, Reverend Donald Brown, don't say what we've been redeemed from, how are we going to help those that are still in bondage? Can I get somebody to help me? Do you know of people who are afraid to talk about their past? Do you know of people who are afraid to tell folk the things they've done? Help me somebody. Uh, can I tell you the truth? If the criteria for being a pastor was based upon being free from sin, y'all would have to hire somebody else this evening. And I've got some breaking news. The pulpit would be vacant because I don't think you're going to find anybody are y'all with me? That is free from sin. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, now I'm speaking about the past tense. But what I want to tell you is, who can better tell the story than somebody who's been there? Who can better tell the story than somebody who's done that? Help me somebody. Yes, we can tell somebody about our past, but we can also tell you about what the Lord has done in the present. Oh my Facebook, I wish that y'all could come in here for a minute because I've got about nine or ten people who are saying amen. I've got about nine or ten people who know anything, who don't seem to know much about being free. So if y'all could help pressure some of the folk in the house to talk about their freedom, or maybe you can't talk about it because you haven't experienced it. Pastor, I joined the church. 65 years ago. Check the books. Go in Miss Wester's office. Go in Miss Bailey's office and you'll find the folder with my name on it the day that I joined the church. Okay, the record speaks that that's the day that you joined the church. But is there an entry in your folder that documents the day that you were liberated? The day that you were set free? The day that you were filled with the Holy Spirit. The day that you know that you know that you know that you know that the Lord put his hands on you and delivered you. I'm tired of hearing folk talk about how long you've been a member of the church. I want to know how long you've been with Jesus. I want to know do you know him as your savior. I want to know that you walk with him, you talk with him, and that you hear him walking and talking with you. I want to know that you can celebrate your freedom. Pastor, free indeed. Dennis Jernigan said, and I'm going to say it again. If we who have been redeemed don't say what we've been redeemed from, how are we going to help those who are still in bondage. Pastor, what are you trying to tell us? You got to tell your story. You got to tell your story. Talk to my children. They'll tell you, O'Brien and Bethany. I do not live in a house where I make them believe that daddy has always, as old deacon used to say, dotted every I and crossed every T. I've told them about what I've done because I don't want them to make the same mistake that I made. But I also told them that I had a collision with Jesus like Paul on the Damascus Road and ever since that day I have not been the same. Don't judge me by what I used to do. But I'm free now. Anybody free now? I wish I had somebody. Anybody free now? Is that your testimony? I was bound but I'm free now. Is that your testimony? That the devil had you strapped down?
Pastor, you haven't given us three points. I'm going there right now. Parent and researching the message. Teaser, I had to come up with something. And this is what the Spirit revealed to me. I did, I would say, uh, something unique. Uh, I cross lottery and looked at several translations. The message arrested my attention. Because that same verse or those same verses in the message says, I tell you most solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead end life. In fact, a slave. A slave cannot go and come as he wants to. The son, though he has established position, has the run of the house. So if the son sets you free, you are free through and through. My first point this morning, and I want somebody to get it, a slave cannot free himself. Now, some of you say, Pastor, I'm getting that. Let me be honest with you. Back when I used to drink uh, a six-pack every day, and I know some of y'all say, good God, Pastor Henry said a six-pack every day. I did. Now, I I didn't drink it because I wanted to get intoxicated. In fact, I didn't get intoxicated. I was going through a period of depression, living in Silver Spring, Maryland. Are y'all with me? Hiding from my sister, going to get a six-pack of Mickey's. Uh Uh-oh. Now, I know why y'all don't not say an amen. Because y'all don't want anybody to know you know what Mickey's are. But Mickey's were in that big, big bottle. Wide mouth. Are y'all with me? So one wasn't good enough. Two made me start feeling a little better. Three chilled me completely out. Can I get somebody to help me? But it was not until I decided that I had to let it go. Are y'all with me? But even making the decision, I couldn't do it on my own. I needed somebody. I needed a higher power. I needed somebody that could set me free. Well, I'm glad to tell you this morning, I don't have to have a six pack anymore. I've got somebody who lives in me and all I got to do is start glorifying his name and I'll get a high that's not a slave cannot free himself how many of your relatives yes your relatives your kinfolk said I can stop when I want to sounds like Reverend Brown And my argument has been, if you can do it, do it. Why are you talking junk? If you can do it, do it. Well, if you can't do it, I know somebody. If you lift your eyes to the hills from which comes your help, I know somebody that can release you. (laughs) Now, if what Dennis Jernigan said is correct, And Facebook can see those of us that are in the house. If we've been redeemed, then we can give hope to somebody else. So if you've ever been in bondage, I want you to stand on your feet uh uh-huh, and let the world know that's who I used to be. And just like he saved me, he can also save you. You ought to put those hands together and give God praise. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed. I dare you to stop right here and give God praise. If you've been delivered, give God praise. If you've been set free, give God praise. If you were bound, give God praise. The liberator is in the house. The liberator is in the house. There's a praise down in your spirit. There's a praise down in your spirit. There's a praise down in your spirit.
Y'all can have your seats if you can. Before we left 3701 Princess Place Drive and before COVID, a person said to me, Pastor Henry, Macedonia is just too live. I want to go to a place where people sit and listen. Y'all just uh, pop up and people just shout and used to run up and down the aisles. And uh, one of my colleagues called it crazy church. It offended me. But when I went home and thought about it, if you don't know my story, you don't understand my praise. If you can sit there, then perhaps you don't know anything about the master. I'm talking about the slave master who desires to keep you bound, who desires to keep you entangled. But if you know anything about Jesus, can I get somebody help me? You know that he can set you free. <laughs> this is not in my notes, but I hear God. How are you going to tell people like Miles McPherson to sit down and shut up? How are you going to tell folk who were addicted and the Lord has liberated them from some substance to sit down and shut up. How you gonna tell a woman that was selling her body and yet she's been delivered, set free, cleansed by the blood of the lamb to sit down and be quiet? How you gonna tell somebody that was tied up with the lure of sin to sit down and shut up? I wish I had somebody help me. You can't tell a person how to praise God I wish I had somebody help me. You can't tell a person how to praise God. You can't tell a person how to praise God. You can't tell a person how to praise God if you don't know what they've been through. I couldn't stop drinking the wide mouth mickeys on my own. And guess what? I'm going to be honest. My family didn't even know it. Nope. My mama thought back then I was the good little boy. Terry doesn't do anything wrong. And that because I was in the closet. Oh. Let me get the closet version straight. I was in the closet concealing what I was doing. Can I get somebody to help me? But when the Lord has set you free, you can open the closet door. I wish I had somebody and come out and tell somebody, that's who I was. But that's not who I am today. Now I know what's going to be on Facebook. Pastor Henry said, he was in the closet. Uh-huh. And you know by the time folk add to it and take away, they'll come out with their own versions. Well, tell whatever lie you want to tell. Tell it to whomever you want to tell it to. Can I get a witness? When I know what the Lord has done for me, when I know the experience of having been released, having been set free, free. The slave brothers and sisters cannot free himself. Lincoln signed the documents. Are y'all with me? But there were many slaves, Perry, who were still not free. The system gave them land on a mule, but many of them were still not free. And it was not until they experienced freedom in and of itself by being saved by the Lamb of God that they could tell somebody, I am free indeed. Pastor Henry, a slave cannot free himself. The second thing is you have to be declared free. 
You remember the scene in the movie Harriet, the life story of Harriet Tubman, the rendition that came out last year? You remember the scene, Gloria, when she's in Philadelphia and the man walks up to her, ready to arrest her unless she could show her freedom papers? Brothers and sisters, that was then. This is now. We don't have to carry papers. And with my short mind that I have, I will lose. <laughs> I would have lost my papers and I would be subject to be detained. Help me somebody. But there is a method by which I was set free. Somebody said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing. Come on somebody. But the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I wish I had somebody who knew what I'm doing. Nothing but the blood. So therefore, we have to be declared free. And in John 8, we hear the declaration coming out of the mouth of Christ. Now therefore, <laughs> if the Son shall make you free, you are free indeed. Well, Pastor Henry, if I'm free, why does the struggle still exist? Because Satan's desire is to get you back. Get you back in the mindset of who you used to be. Hold you hostage to your past. Make you believe that you are not saved. Can I be honest with you, teacher, and tell somebody that there were days that I wrestled with my own freedom? There were days that if I slipped up and did something, are y'all with me? Then I felt like the enemy was trying to take me back. I want to talk to some real folk. Days that my past came looking for me. Days when I was held captive to the things and folk that I used to do. Things I used to do, the people that I used to hang around with. Ah, but there's a word that I need to share with somebody. And that word is found in Romans chapter 8. Paul said, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to put a hallelujah right there. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to put a praise the Lord right there. And there is now, therefore, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to put a thank you Lord right there. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the spirit but after the flesh but after the spirit. Y'all didn't get it. There is now no condemnation. There's nothing you can say about a believer that has been set free that will condemn them because the one who set them free paid the ultimate price on a hill called Calvary. I wish I had some the one who paid the price is the only one that condemn us and he has decided neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Pastor Henry you said a slave can't free himself. You said you must be declared free. Declared free by Jesus Christ himself. But let me be honest with you. My late mother-in-law, we had this, oh, back and forth for years. I admired her, loved her, respected her. But we would always argue about, not argue, debate about eternal security. Because there are those who still believe, well, you know, uh, I, I'm saved, but uh, I'm not sure. Charles Stanley said, are you going to choose to live your life on a banana peeling? Pastor, you know what that means? Slipping and sliding. I think I'm a Christian. I might be a Christian. John says that you know that you are saved. Help me somebody. And if you don't know, then you are the prime target for the devil. Because the devil wants to make sure that you can never say you are certain about your salvation. But I'll tell you somebody, can I tell you the truth? 
Jesus died one time. And he's not going to die anymore. And the price that he paid sets the record straight. He doesn't have to do it over and over and over again. You don't have to get saved over and over again. I, I know some of y'all don't like that. But I'm telling you what the word says. Those whom Christ, those whom the Son have set free, are free indeed. A slave cannot free himself. You must be delivered. You must be declared free. And finally, there must be a liberator. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, do you remember, Perry, what he said? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Two statements in two verses. To set at liberty those that are bruised to preach deliverance to the captive. If you're free, then there's no need of you proclaiming Christ. If you can do it yourself, then what Jesus did on the cross is null and void. But if you call on the name of Jesus, and he heard your cry. I wish I had somebody to help me. Did you call him? His name is Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. Mary's baby. The rose of Sharon. The lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. He is the liberator. And somebody said, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Y'all to help me finish it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Pastor, you finished? Not yet. And then Tasha Cobbs put a contemporary spin on it. She said, break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Break every chain. But the part that I love is she says, I can hear the chains fall. That's why the devil is mad this morning. Because he can hear the chains fall. The chains of your past. The chains that have had you bound. The chains that have held you back. I can hear the chains fall. Break every chain break every chain that's why the devil wants to hold you back because he can see the chains fall and because he already knows the power of the liberator can I get somebody to help me because they spent time together until the devil was cast out of heaven so if there's anybody Reverend Brown who knows the power of Jesus the devil knows and he knows that if you will get in the presence of the Lord, I hear the chains <laughs> fall. I hear the chains fall. I hear the chains fall. The pastor, that doesn't make any sense to me. I hear the chains falling. I hear the things that had me bound, falling. I hear the things that had me restricted, falling. I hear the sound of chains being broken because the one that I serve is able to break 
every chain. To break every chain. Pastor Henry, I want to get in touch with the liberator this morning. Can you tell me how to get in touch with him? You don't have to send a tweet. You don't have to message him on Facebook. The Bible says, and whosoever shall call. It's an easy fix. On the name of our Lord shall be saved. I'm going to say something that's going to make some folk mad, but it's all right. It's man-made religion that has caused so many people to walk away. Because each religion had its own boundaries. Its own means, a method by which a man can be saved. You got to do this over here. You got to do this over here. And these folk over here say, you got to do this. And we're all arguing, arguing as to who's right and who's wrong. The Bible said, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be, <laughs> shall be. Miles McPherson said, when he had had enough, he remembered what the boys told him. Just call on Jesus. After a 24-hour binge on cocaine, he called on Jesus. And I know somebody said, well, Pastor, if he had been on it for 24 hours, that means it was still in the system. <laughs> call it what you want to call it. Yes. Say what you want to say. Yes. But the word that had been deposited yes. in his spirit, yes. great is he that is in you yes. than he that is in the world. There's power in the name <laughs> of Jesus. To break every chain. There's power. Take us there, Antron, in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. There's an army rising up. To break every chain. Somebody said to me recently about one of their relatives, Pastor, he's too far gone. Then you're telling me then that Christ's power is limited. Not so. I tell you, he's able. I can stay right there for the rest of the He's able. Miles McPherson said, I needed somebody who's stronger than my addiction. <laughs> I know somebody. I tried him for myself. And I know that he's able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To break every chain. There's some things I thought I was going to never come out of. There's some strongholds that I thought that was stronger than I am. But I called on the name of Jesus. I called him. He heard my cry. He heard my cry. He heard my cry. I'm sorry, but there's a praise down in my spirit. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too hard for him. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. I want somebody right now, right where you stand, to give him praise for what he's done in your life.
Hallelujah. 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 It does not mean that we are perfect. There's none perfect but one. But it means that we are forgiven. The chains of Jesus have been broken. The chains have been broken. Go ahead and sing it. Oh, Jesus. That's it. Deacon Carlton, there's no name there is power under the heavens whereby men can be saved. In the name of Jesus. To break, to break every, chain. every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. If you know that, put your chain. hands together. Hey. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. There is power. I hear my spirit. In the name Jesus. There's somebody today on July 3rd. You want it to be called your independence day. The day that you were set free in Christ. I want you to come. I want you to come. There are ministers here who will minister to you. There's somebody. Break every chain. Pastor Henry is going to take everything in me to make that walk to the front of the church. You ought to see the walk that Jesus took for you. Walk the Via Della Rosa all the way to Calvary, carrying the cross, bearing your sins and bearing my sins. He bore our sins on the cross. There's somebody. You've had a past. You're like the pastor, you've had a past. But you hear Jesus calling you. Come out from among them, saith the Lord, and be ye separate. Would you come? Reverend Dolly and the Brown and Reverend Caldwell, would you come? Let's put our hands together. The Bible says when one comes, the heavens rejoice. Come on, somebody. I need our ministers. Jesus said, today if you hear my voice and harden not your heart, today, hallelujah, today, if you hear my voice, if you're watching via Facebook, there's a young lady at the altar who's answered the call. I, and I feel like there's somebody else. God said, you can put it behind you today. You can be released from that stronghold today. The liberator's in the house. The liberator's in the house. The liberator's in the house. To break every chain. Take us there and try. Take in us back. In the name of Jesus. I know we're clock watching, but I hear God. To break every chain. There's another. Break every chain. Break every chain. You don't have to go back home to see where you left. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. I'm not asking you to join the church. That was not the call. You can go and join any church in this area. Good churches, good pastors. But today, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you can be set free. Yeah, you can be set free today. I hear the chains falling. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. Because he wants to keep you in your past. Do you know what a yoke is? A yoke is something you put around a neck. It 
controls you. It limits you. It keeps you from walking in freedom. I hear the chains falling. The yoke can come off today. Jesus can liberate you today. I hear the chains falling. If you're not in the house, if you're listening on the TV, maybe you got a smart TV, on your cell phone, on your iPad, whatever means or method, the word is reaching you. I tell you, you can be saved in your house right now. That's why the devil's mad. Because the chains are falling. I hear, I hear the, the chains, chains falling. falling. Mm. 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 I hear the chains falling. I'm waiting. Pastor, we're running out of time. The Holy Spirit said. There's another person here. Take that step. Step out of the rut that you've been in. And come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's room at the cross. Thank God for being long-suffering. If you're without a church home and you've decided, y'all can sing it low over there. Keep it going. Got two deacons right here. Deacon Jenkins. Deacon Carlton. Deacon Perkins and Deacon Nicholson on that end. And any of them can move to whatever the area that you're in. Come. Come. Confessing. Come believing. I've been walking into a pulpit for 34 years. Every time I make that step, the enemy tries to make me feel you are not worthy. But every time the enemy opens his mouth, I remind the enemy what Jesus did on the cross. He settled my account. He paid my sin debt in full. Would you come? Juneteenth didn't do it. July 4th can't do it. Only Christ can set you free. It's prayer time. I don't know whether you realize this or not, but it seems like every time families get together, every holiday, there are mass shootings. Mental health disorders come out of the woodwork. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we're going to gather with families. Can we come together for prayer and ask God to protect us, to protect our families? Come on, to protect our cities. Can we come together as believers and gather at the altar and seek God's covering? It's prayer time as we come. And maybe you're saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be home by myself. You ought to celebrate that the chains have fallen. Celebrate your liberty. In Christ Jesus. Celebrate uh -huh. what the Lord has done and what he's doing. 
celebrate. Deacon Wendell Perkins, please find the mic and take us higher. Call on the name of he who holds the world in the palm of his hand. Call on the name of the one who can break every chain. Call on the name of the one who can set the captive free. Call on the name of our Redeemer. Call him. Call him. Call him. Call him. And you'll hear the chains falling. You'll hear your breakthrough. You'll hear the sound of deliverance. I hear the chains falling. And he's able to break every chain. To break every chain. Nothing too hard for him. He can do it. Father God, we come this afternoon to give thanks and praise to your holy and everlasting name. Because you are the one to give praises to. You set the captives free. You know what's in their hearts and what's in their mind. You know what we have gone through and what we are going through. Father God, we ask you this morning to set us free. Deliver us. Then we can hear the change drop. Father God, just have your way in our life. Even sometimes we're afraid to approach you about certain things. But God, here we are. We're giving it all to you this morning, Lord. Just have your way in our life. Whether it be sickness, Lord, we need you. Whether it be anything that is troubling us, Lord, you know all about it. Father God, we cannot do it ourselves. We must come to you, Father God, to be released this morning. Father God, we thank you for our pastor, Lord, who has resonated this message in our heart. Father God, we ask that you give us the mindset to take it with us, that we will be able to pull from it through day to day, Lord. Father God, just have your way. The sickness, Lord, that is going on all around us, Lord, you know all about it. Just touch right now and move. The appointments we have, Lord, Father, just go with us and stand by us. Guide the doctor's hands, Father God, for they are in your care. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to just have mercy on us. Father God, this is our prayer we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you return to your seats, we're going to use these next three minutes to commune together. I did not have a chance to get this in before Deacon Perkins started his prayer, but I would ask this morning that we would please lift up Connie White's husband, that's Audrey's brother-in-law, Rodney White, who is now under palliative care, ask that we would lift his name on high, Rodney White. Connie, who traveled with us to the Holy Land, has been very good to me, her husband, Rodney. It's too, not too late to call his name in prayer. Before we commune together, let me ask if you did not receive your communion when you entered into the sanctuary, would you please raise your hand and one of the deacons will get it to you immediately. Someone else, all the way in the back. Deacon Bell is in the back. Deacon Nicholson is right there. There's two over there. Deacon Carlton on the bare back. If there's another. This is why we are free because of the price he paid, the blood that he shed.
Thank you, brethren. The scripture says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. May we take this moment to eat together. After the same manner, verse 25, he says he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. This is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. He reminds us in verse 26, for as oft as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. And certainly he's coming again. For those of you that have joined us, we invite you to continue joining us this morning at 9.30 promptly in just a moment. Reverend Darlene Brown, our daughter in the ministry, is going to lead us in our Sunday morning Bible discussion. Join us via Zoom or in the multipurpose room. This ends our live feed. It is our prayer. I'm not going to wish you a happy fourth. I'm not going to do it. But I am going to tell you, if you're not free, you can be free today. I will say, enjoy the time with your family on the fourth. Why are you doing that, Pastor? Because I want you to know that the fourth is not <laughs> the day that declares your freedom. It is Jesus Christ who declares your freedom. In him, in him we have our freedom. God bless you. This ends our feed. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.